In this tutorial, we're going to go through how to download tick level court data for any particular Darwin or the entire universe of Darwins uh, via the Darwin XFTP server as opposed to the API itself. So the Darwin API has this capability as well as you'll have noticed in previous tutorial videos within the Darwin API playlist that there is an endpoint for historical quotes that allows you to get data in different time precisions. The availability of tick level quote data, however, is uh, restricted in a few ways. There being resolution related constraints on the amount of data that you can request in any given call with any particular precision. If you'd like to bypass this restriction and download all tick level data without having to compose uh, sequential queries to access the same, which takes time and imposes resources on the API servers as well, we do provide this tick level data via the FTP server and this can be accessed as follows. So if you've uh, configured your FTP access as we went through in a previous tutorial, then simply going into the FTP repository, you'll notice that the directory structure is such that the root directory of the FTP repository has folders each named by the Darwin ticker symbol. So in this case, let's go over to a particular Darwin's uh, folder, this being Darwin NTI, and go inside the folder to see where the quote data is. All of these flat files here contain raw data uh, for each of those uh, attributes. The quote data is housed inside a dedicated folder within a Darwin's root folder, and that folder is called quotes. If you go inside quotes, you'll notice a further directory structure uh, such that quote data for each month of each year is organized into a folder of its own. And say we go inside any particular folder, the files are stored as gzipped CSV files. And the file name format is such that you have the ticker symbol followed by the product risk of the Darwin and the remainder of its entire ticker symbol followed by the month, the year, uh, month, the year, the day and the hour that that data belongs to. Downloading all of this data in one go can be pretty resource intensive. And uh, while that's obviously an option, parsing this data is the next challenge in getting all of this data into your environment. So we've gone ahead and put together a solution in Python to enable you to automate this process, whereby you can specify a Darwin for which you'd like to acquire quote data and specify either the option to download all the quote data relevant to this Darwin or for a particular period of time. So let's go into our development environment and see how that all works. In order for us to access the FTP server programmatically, we'll have to write some code that uh, creates the FTP connection from inside our Python environment, sets up the necessary bytes.io buffers to process all of the information, and um, we will also need to execute certain commands remotely, FTP commands, and get responses to those commands into our environment. So for that, we've made the process easy by writing the script for you that we'll publish to GitHub shortly after the publication of this video. Uh, but let's run through the specifics of the script very quickly to understand how it works. So you can, of course, use it as is, but it also, by understanding it this way, it gives you the opportunity to modify this to suit any particular purpose you may have in mind. The script takes a few parameters and takes the ticker symbol of the Darwin. The suffix is the product risk of the Darwin that is, uh, in the file name for each Darwin. So here we have product risk three Darwins. Let's go to a period where product risk four applies, which is the latest product risk for 10% value at risk Darwins. And that let's, for example, January, 2019, this file here, nti.4.12. It is the dot four dot that um, designates this particular file as containing product risk four value at risk target 10% uh, at 95% confidence data. So we'll specify that in here so that once we pull all the file name data that we will shortly into this function, we can extract only the data that's relevant to the most recent product risk, which is product risk four. Going into the particulars, the general logic of the function is such that the very first thing it does is it takes your Darwin argument and it goes into the quotes folder, as we saw earlier in our um, Windows FTP share here. And within that, it, based on your preferences as provided in the arguments list, if you set monthly to true, it will assume that all data needs to be downloaded. If you set it to false, then it would rely on the month and year figures that you provided to get the data for that month and year. Inside of this function, once it's listed the directory, it will then get the file names that are inside all of those directories and compose a big list of all the files that you need to download with their full FTP root path and file name appended together. 
Once it has all of that, it will then go through each file sequentially, downloading all the data, concatenating it into one big data frame and outputting that data frame. So to give you an example of how that looks, as this can take a fair bit of time, if you're downloading all quote data for any particular Darwin, what we've done prior to shooting this video is done that for you and saved that quote data to a file. How you would execute such a query with the script, of course, would be to first instantiate an object of the script with your FTP credentials, as we covered in a previous tutorial. And uh, once that's done, you would then basically call the get quotes from FTP function and inside this provide the necessary information. Let's assume we were going to download all the quotes available for Darwin NTI at product risk four. We would execute a query that looks like this, where we set monthly to true and ignore the other parameters. This would then proceed to start downloading the information. As you can see over here, uh, we're going to interrupt that query as we've already downloaded the data. But essentially, that's the process for executing the query and then getting the data into your Python environment. As we've already downloaded this data and loaded it into a variable called NTI underscore quotes, just going to go have a quick look at what that looks like. And uh, it's essentially a time series with quote as the only column containing all the quotes that are available for this Darwin at this product risk. If you'd like to plot it to see the evolution of this particular um, Darwin over time, that's as easy as calling the plot function on the data frame, and that will plot the data that is available to us. Notice that this data starts at a different start date to the Darwin's original track record start date. This is because the data available in the form of quotes is data since the Darwin's most recent validation date. And that is to be taken into consideration when uh, accessing quote data. If you're looking for data for the entire history of the Darwin, then it's better to call the Darwin API and access daily level quotes for this same Darwin that span the entire length of the Darwin's track record over time. So that's it. That's how you download data via FTP through the Python, through your Python environment using uh, the script we're providing here uh, to be published on GitHub soon. And the script is structured in a way that you can make changes to it, modify it to suit your needs. And if you have any interesting ideas for making this script more efficient, please do let us know and uh, submit a pull request. If there's something that improves upon what you've already seen on GitHub, we'd be more than happy to review it and add it to the repository for the benefit of the entire community. In the next few tutorials, we'll talk about how to access behavioral data for any particular Darwin and do some interesting research with it. See you in the next tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.